arm. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm David Yakir. And I'm Susan <laughs> Keller Horn. And once again, I forgot my name. <laughs> and you're listening to Yak About Today, where you never know where the show will go. So sit back and watch us, or get up, put your headphones on, go for a run, and listen to what we yak about today. again for listening. I'm David Yak here. And, and I'm Susan Kellerhorn. <laughs> and I know my name. <laughs> and, and this time we got it right. Anyway, we're here to talk about the uh, film festival, of course. But first, I want to introduce our guest, who we're going to talk to in a few minutes. His name is J.R. Poli, and we've got his new film playing at the festival. It's called Marcus. And in about a minute, we're going to start talking about it. But first, we got to promote the festival. Yes, so, we do. Anyway, we do have all the films on our website. That's vbfilmfest.org. Um, if you go, you can click on one of those boxes, and it'll tell you where to go, and you can watch all the trailers for all the films we have. And soon, and maybe we'll talk about it a little, we'll put up the events. Um, we intend to have, let's see, let's see if I can do this, Susan. So we're going to have a very special dinner. It used to be called a Vintner dinner. Now it's called Parla Mare, and it's an evening by the sea. It's going to be at uh, Grant Harbor on June, June 8th. June 8th, and it's going to be at the Beach Club, the Grant, know, Harbor, the Grant Beach Harbor Beach Club. Beach Club. That's right. Um, and that'll be our real kickoff, our launch of the 2022 Film Festival. So we're hoping you'll go on our site. That's bbfilmfest.org. And buy your tickets. And by the way, there's some great deals going on now. We have 15% uh, off if you buy tickets for two. That's from a Mother's Day special. So, you know, and that, people. That 15% off is for the Cinema Select Pass and the VIP Premiere Pass. That's right. That's right. Those are right. the two passes that, that sales for. So we're hoping that you'll go there now before the sale ends. But we're keeping the sale going. We're extending it all the way to the 15th. So if you're listening or you're watching now, go online, get your tickets. But if you're listening to this on the radio, it'll play on the uh, 14th and 15th. Am I right, uh, Jesse? Yeah. All right, That's 14th right. and 15th. Yep. So um, pick up your tickets. And some of the other events. Uh, so there's the... Um, Thursday night opening night party. We're going yes. to have a Treasure Coast theme. That's might right. be a little bit of piratey kind of a thing. And That's right. I think we've we've used one of our films that we have that um, is in the Vero Visions category that is featuring. It's called the Queen's Jewels. So yeah, we were thinking of adventure. Yeah, we were thinking actually of uh, naming the opening night party the Queen's Jewels. So, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to it. I think everybody's looking forward to it. I think on um, Friday, um, for the filmmakers and the VIP ticket holders and special guests, we are going to have a special little get-together where everybody can mingle. It, uh, it'll take place at noon on Friday. And on Friday evening... We have a tasting, a tasting, a tasting, right? And I've been talking with the wine vendor and Charlotte and things are really moving along. But if you have something that you would like Vero to taste, please call us, contact us at v BB. Well, what's our email address? Uh, it's info at vbfilmfest.org and um, send us information or contact David or me. Most people know us. Um, and we will be glad to include you in our tasting. Yeah, and we have a great party coming on Saturday night. So we've got a film called Worst to First 
And for those people in New York, they'll they'll know this storyline. Um, we had a, a DJ who started down in Florida. His name is Scott Shannon. And um, he was hired by some reeky dink station up in New York that was in the swamps of New Jersey. Hey, and... <laughs> I take offense at that. I'm from those swamps of New Jersey. <laughs> well, I think, I think you live on higher ground. <laughs> but anyway, what he did that was so phenomenal was he took the last place nothing station all the way to number one in 78 days. And this is the story of how he did it and all the stars of the 80s that he influenced and how they came back to support him. It's a great documentary. And as a result, we've decided to throw a party uh, right after the film. It's an 80s based party. It'll be a dance party. And we think that's going to be a lot of fun. Jill says so. that we're supposed to wear our best 80s tracksuit. I threw mine away a long time ago. <laughs> so... I don't know what I'm wearing, but it won't be a tracksuit. Yeah, I'm going to wear <laughs> sort of a, one of those matching top and bottom, but I'm going to wear a headband like, you know, they used to wear to the gym back then, you know, when they would do, uh, what exercises did they do? Oh, jazzercise. 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 And I, right. I, I might have to go all neon if I can find anything neon. All right. All right. We should get to our guest. Because yes. otherwise yes. We, can, we can talk the whole half show. This is you know, true. The, the this show, is true. The show about. So, so, so our guest is J.R. Poley, and he has become a friend. Um, we showed his short film, Marcus, in 2018, and this is the film that he has produced as a result of that short film. So hi, J.R. How are you? Hey, J.R. Hey, what's going on? How you guys doing? Thanks for having me. Oh, thank you. Um, anyway, Jr. so please tell us a little bit about Marcus. Tell us about the film. Yeah, Marcus uh, follows a man who's dealing with uh, mental illness, uh, depression, uh, to be more specific. And it's how basically it affects his day-to-day uh, -day life, his uh, relationship with his family, his relationship with his job, his relationship with his friends. Um, and it's something that a lot of people are... A lot more people than we still think are dealing with it. Um, I know the percentages of people dealing with depression and other mental health is uh, uh, mental issues are, you know, is going up and there's more statistics about it. But I think it's just there's more than we think uh, just based on who you talk to and all. So, this, so the film kind of revolves around that. It's very raw, <laughs> if I can uh say uh it's mostly it's all written from my experiences with depression um and i wrote the film based on my experiences on on top of five others who i've known in my lifetime that have all uh committed suicide so i basically took the story of six people who have who suffered severely from depression have considered suicide one of which has won the battle till now which is my you know my story and the other five and kind of combined this really, I think, I, 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 you know, it's, it is an emotional story, especially to me because of, you know, what I went through. But yeah, I mean, that's basically Marcus. You know, um, Susan and I were having a discussion earlier uh, while we were preparing for the uh, podcast, and we were trying to decide if it, was it just depression? Was there a, a touch of schizophrenic because of the conversations there, that were taking place in the car, you know, uh, with the various iterations of himself. Yeah, there's definitely schizophrenia. Because one of one of the guys, Mike, uh, that I knew, he was uh, we used to play in a band together. Um, he was he had schizophrenia in his uh, in his um, with along with depression. Um, so yeah, I kind of I, I tapped I kind of tapped into all sorts of things. But the the car scene was mostly. Um, written that was the short by the way the car scene was the actual short that played in 2018 at the vero beach film festival and um i wrote that one night in the shower it was, i was it was 2 3 a.m and i was very close to uh basically doing the worst thing i can do and my daughter who was only three or four at the time she called out for my wife which is really rare because she didn't she usually slept through the night and that kind of snapped me out of it. And instead of doing that, I went right to the computer, wrote the uh, the script, the ten page script, and then the next morning handed it to my wife, who had known I was what I was dealing with. Uh, so what happened in the car is very um, 
I mean, I, I'm, I don't suffer from schizophrenia, but I, I felt all these voices kind of pulling me one way or another. And it was, uh, it, you know, obviously I had the main one at that moment that was, you know, louder than the others telling me to do this thing. And I kind of just thought, you know what, this could be a powerful short film. That's all I thought it was going to be was a short film that all takes place in one place, uh, you know, the vehicle. And uh, I can kind of just, you know, tell my story and maybe move some people, you know, maybe some people that don't deal with depression, but have, you know, friends or family who are dealing with it might be able to at least kind of contemplate a little bit or understand a little bit with what they're, they're dealing with. So that's where it all derived from, from that one night in the shower. So there was one scene where you had Marcus talk to someone else who was contemplating suicide. What, and he, and what, 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 what was going through your mind when you wrote that? What were you thinking? And what, what do you feel that Marcus was thinking and the other person? Yeah, that, that's, that quickly became one of my favorite scenes when I, when I wrote it. Um, it was, and it's definitely a lot of people's favorite scenes because it, it's kind of a weird approach to dealing with it because there was some humor behind it, um, mostly because he was so, Marcus himself was so like, um, you know, whatever about it, he kind of left and didn't really pull the guy off the ledge. Um, but I, I wrote that because of my many, many conversations with my friends who have who ha did in, indeed you know commit suicide and how at the time I wasn't dealing with anything like that and after they killed themselves I remembered having these conversations where they kind of went just like that where I was so insincere to their feelings and their thoughts and in speaking to their wives or their uh, fiancés or even their parents uh, they also had those moments where this person was going through something and it was clear and people just shrugged it off and kind of just, you know, kind of pat them on the bat and said, Hey, you know, get, get over it, you know, brush it off and didn't really go deeper into it. So I kind of wrote that in a way where Marcus was getting a lot off his chest because, you know, uh, Marcus is in a way, a lot of me, like that's me on screen. And I never wanted to talk to anybody about it. I didn't, I felt like it would make it worse. I didn't want to be put on medication because I felt like that would put me in a place where I didn't want to be. Um, and it, 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 he realizes then that he basically talking does kind of help, if, especially if you talk to the right person. In this case, it's a stranger. But if you talk to the right people and they are supportive of it, it will help you kind of change it's a major relief and that's what happens almost instantly when he gets back to the car and he realizes he's by himself um he sees that it actually worked but that's where i was going with that i, I kind of wanted to mix my conversations with these other guys and the way i was so nonchalant about the situation at that time and then with him actually getting some kind of therapeutical um you know moment Hey, uh, you know, we're going to take a break right now, but I want to talk about Marcus as a person. So think about that, and when we get back, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, welcome back. I'm David Yakir. I'm here with Susan Keller Horn. And I said her name because she would get it. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, uh, we're talking to J.R. Po uh, Poli uh, about his new film, Marcus. And, you know, the question I have, J.R., is, and I think you were sort of leading there uh, earlier, about the actual person. Uh, who was Marcus? I mean, separate from the depression, you know, he seemed, and I think you do this during the movie, he's very kind, very articulate, um, obviously very, very smart, you know, and at first you wonder how, the, how he ended up in these circumstances because he seemed to have everything going for him except that he suffered from depression. And schizophrenia. And schizophrenia. Right. Bit. Well, I mean, that's exactly it, though. That's that's the point. Mar Marcus, like I said before, was written based on five you know, people plus myself. And every situation, every scene in the movie practically has some truth to it. Like, these are scenes that uh, either I did, I went through or one of my friends went through. And, uh, for instance, the scene in the living room 
and you know uh, the big monologue he has about um, why this happened to him and going in, taking him, checking himself in, or not checking, you know, just going to the ER to get some help. Um, this happens to everyone, and the reason why Marcus comes off intelligent, he comes off kind. This, you know, because it doesn't, you know, it has no. Uh, I guess it's not a very, you know, it doesn't pick some people specifically. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't, right, right. It, there's, it doesn't judge anyone. It, it basically will attack this mental health, any mental health, will, you know, issues will attack basically anybody. It doesn't matter, you know, how successful you are or how intelligent you are or, you know, how, you know, let's say how poor you are. I mean, it, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. And that was, a big reason why I went that way, because um, he is kind. He obviously is caring. You know, he uh, loved his family, and uh, his daughter obviously loved him, uh, and his friends seemed to love him until this specific moment where he was hit with this, and the realization, at least, because he's had, he had it for a while before that. But when he hit, was hit with the realization of what he was going through and the feelings he was having, that's when kind of his life started falling apart. And I'm not saying everyone who suffers from mental health, um, uh, if their life falls apart. It's a matter of being able to handle it. And some people can't. Some people can much better than others, especially with the support system. And the support system is basically everything. You know, I'm, I'm still here. I have, you know, four kids. I have a wife. They support me by all means. I mean, I, editing this movie was extremely difficult. Uh, just watching Owen's performance in situations that I've been personally in um, was, I mean, just, I, it was, my wife knew when I was deep into something because she'll see it in my eyes. Uh, I'd, I'd be puffed up because of crying just watching an edit. And she would be ready to go just, to, you know, with movie tickets or a baseball game. You know, she was ready to go just to take me out of the moment almost instantly because that's what you need. And what kind of help? Do you feel that Marcus got and what kind of help do, do, did you get beyond just the family? What, what kind of help did you seek? Funny, me personally, I will tell you, uh, my help came a lot through the festival world. I mean, as crazy as that sounds, when I released the short, only my wife and Owen, the, the actor, knew what I was dealing with. And I, mostly because I, I opened myself up to him so that he knew what was going on. Although... Owen himself also is very verbal about his depression. Um, he, I kind of wanted just to open up on every, all my thoughts just so that he can, he knew where I was going with, uh, with the script. Um, but those were the only two people that knew. And as I got to, you know, my first festival with the short, uh, you know, you get put on stage and you do the Q and A and you open up a little more and then you open up a little more. And then there was one festival on the on the West Coast that I, I, I really just opened up. I mean, I broke down. I was crying. And, and, and the, the organizer actually walked up to me and said, man, that's got to be probably the rawest fest, you know, Q&A I've ever heard in my life. And from there on forward, I was just very open. And uh, when I premiered this feature uh, a couple years ago because of COVID, it's been a, you know, a while now, um, the, that's the first time my mom found out. And my mom was the one I held from the most just because she's got a lot of issues, you know, not her, not personal issues. She's got five other kids to worry about. I didn't want to be another, another thing for her to, you know, be brought down by, especially she over worries, she over concerns herself. So I brought her aside the week before the festival. I said, listen, I, this is going to get really, I'm going to get open up. I'm not going to hold back and you're going to find some out. I don't want you to find out in the middle of a crowd of 500 people. Uh, I was in so that I'm crowd of 500 people. <laughs> I, it was yeah. a wonderful premiere, and thank you for sharing it oh, with thank you with us. And I thank didn't you. realize I, I that did, I, your mom I, didn't know. No, my mom did not know it, uh, until the week before. Um, I did have my kids leave the room. I don't know if you remember that, but I asked my wife to take my kids out because you know it's a little too much for them at this point. Uh, they know what I I suffered through this stuff, but I didn't want to get to a point where they found out. You know, find out I was I mean that close one night uh to ending it while they were alive in the other rooms uh, I, that's something i didn't want them at this age knowing but um you know so how about yeah. marcus what do you feel marcus found like marcus, how did he find help well marcus's help comes in the movie basically when he he realizes there's something there the, obviously he's got a, a grandchild on it's on the way uh it's kind of kind of snaps him out of certain things and uh he decides to make you know make amends with his daughter 
uh, who he hasn't seen for many, many years. And that kind of sets him on the right path. There's obviously still obstacles like, you know, things in his past, uh, you know, from friendships to, you know, his ex-wife to uh, to even his daughter, who really wants nothing to do with him right now. So there's those obstacles in there. But he realizes that by distracting himself, which is something I always say when it comes to mental health. I mean, everyone uses <clears throat> the words distraction as a negative thing, but distraction is actually the most positive word you can, you know, when it comes to mental health. Uh, yeah, the more you're distracted, the, the less you're thinking about what's going on in the back of your head. So once he starts distracting himself, he's no longer just sweeping a floor, you know, this massive bank where his thoughts are just constantly in his mind. He, you know, he's got his daughter in front of him, then he's got a granddaughter, and that's basically the help he gets. I didn't want to go too far into the, you know, him seeking medical, uh, just because not a lot of people can do that. You know, right. not a lot of people can afford it. Not a lot of people have the insurance for it. Um, speaking of insurance, I've premiered this movie in, in, in other countries and I had to explain for about an hour, like wow. why, <laughs> why that happens in this country. Cause nobody understood the insurance part. They were like, wait a minute. Why didn't well, you just we go get gonna, help? You know? We're going to have to continue this conversation when we show the film. And I know you can't be at the festival. We will have Owen there. Um, and we will I'm, I, I, we're working on having a Zoom Q&A for you. So thank you so much for sharing oh, awesome. your film and your journey and your story. And of course, I we've got a dozen other questions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I, I have like this whole list of questions, so we'll be uh, talking. Yeah. <laughs> so. we, we will get you on well, Zoom, and that way we can ask the uh, questions then. That, that'd be perfect. I won't be in this country at that moment, but I, like I said, I'm open to being up at four or five in the morning. I would love to be a Q and a, to a Q&A. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks you. so much, JR. Appreciate it. And yep. uh, thanks for listening to Yak About Today and Film. Uh, Susan and I will be back um, when? Well, <laughs> next, next week. Next week. <laughs> Same time. We go out live on Thursdays. Uh, Tuesday and Thursday, Thursdays live. Saturday and Sunday, you can get us on the radio on uh, at 9 o'clock on, I think it's 101.7 or 107.1. I don't know. I'm bad at that stuff. I'm sorry. 1017. <laughs> but vbfilmfest.org. That's where you need to go to buy your passes and your tickets. And we look forward to seeing you at the festival. Bum 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 bum